going to talk about uh, async iterators and uh, how it can change stream streaming systems in the future. Um, so about me, I'm Steven. Hello. Um, I'm on GitHub and Twitter. Um, and we're going to talk about some things. Um, the intro, uh, some of you might have seen Mateo's talk earlier, so you've already maybe seen a bit of intro to async iterators, so I won't spend too much time on that one. Um, also going to show off some use cases, some like more complicated use cases for async iterators. Um, talk about a bit of the pitfalls of using them, and uh, do a little performance demo. Um, so what, what are async iterators? Uh, it matches the async function uh, system and the generator function system into one thing. Um, special signature, you have both the async symbol and the asterisk. Uh, so you can await stuff and you can yield stuff. And just returns an iterator that you can do a four wait loop over. Um, and it's also internally an interface that um, just promise, like promise returning next function um, that resolves to an object with a value and a, a flag indicating whether it's done or not. And um, objects that have this async iterator, like symbol.async iterator function that returns an iterator uh, can be consumed by four, uh, like 408 of loops. Um, so get to the get to the examples. Um, so uh, streams are actually async iterators. Um, so it, you, you can just take a like any create read stream and just for await over it. Like right now, this already works. Um, so just go and do it. Um, so with with that, like you can do a simple concat stream type thing. To like this, like there's a bunch of modules in e in the user land right now to do like a stream concat that are like five times the the length of this to do the same thing. So it makes things easier. Um, and uh, the, you, you can also do stream transformations. Um, I'm going to be soon working on a pull request that's um, in Node Core. There's a function called pipeline, which you might see later in the presentation that uh, replaces the like stream.pipe. Um, so you just call pipeline. And it looks basically the same as this. He's given a bunch of streams. Um, th this is my, my own user land thing um, using async iterator pipe, which uh, takes just any stream the same as uh, like pipeline does um, and transforms streams. But it al also takes, uh, uh, it can also take the async generator uh, functions uh, in place of a stream. Um, which just looks like that. Um, so it's it's just a function that receives another iterable and produces a new one. Um, so this iterable can be like an existing stream or another one of these, and you can just chain all these together. Um, the the nice thing about uh, async uh, generator functions is that you you can actually just like call like call all these nested and pass the values into into each other. And that's basically what this pipe module does when it sees that it's not a stream. Um, uh, and so we're going to show something a little more compl complex this time. Because um, th this other one is just uppercasing a stream that doesn't really do anything too notable. Uh, so let's try uh, parsing a CSV file and converting that to a new line delimited JSON. Um, so we have a CSV file. We just do a create read stream on that. And then we have to do a line split. Um, so we, we, we want to start, start with an empty buffer. And uh, just as we receive chunks from the read stream, append those chunks to uh, an intermediate buffer that we're working with, and continuously watch that until we see a new line character, which um, this is just looking for the um, 
the, the like character code for it instead of the string, so I don't have to stringify this. Um, and uh, it it's just looping looping over at, as long as there is a new line in here, then um, it it will slice up to the point of that new line and yield that chunk, and then move the pointer, um, like resetting that buffer. And so this will just keep like loop until I have a new line and then emit that, loop until I have another new line, emit that, and just keep doing that. And then eventually you might have uh, no new line terminator at the end of the file, so just yield if there's anything left. Um, and now that we've split it into lines, we need to do something with those lines, which is trans uh, translate that as CSV. Um, so the first line in CSV is just the key names, so we can loop over each line and just split the first line into an array of the keys. And then the next, for every subsequent line, uh, the position in the array maps to the key position in the key list. Uh, so we just make a data object out of that and then yield that. And then to JSON is just JSON stringify. So it's pretty easy to do. And so now we can pass that to standard out. So we've managed to do this like fairly complicated task of like taking a CSV file and converting that to new, li new line delimited JSON in like 50 lines of code, which with streams, this would be a bunch more complicated. Um, and so that uh, pipe module is actually just this. Like that's the entire module. Um, it has this for handling streams, which as I said before, a stream is just an iterable, so you can just iterate over things. And th this um, handles a stream on, like if it's targeting a stream, then you can just iterate over the iterable source, whether it's a stream or not, and just write into the stream and end when you're done the loop. Um, and then if it's a function, it, you can just hand it the source directly. So you just create this like nested call thing. Um, and then all we have to do is just detect whether something is a stream and pick which side of the logic we want to do. And then you can just do a, like reduce all the targets. So you have like the, in the pipeline, the first thing is the source. And then you're just like connecting each thing in the pipeline to the next thing. So you just have each target gets reduced into the source. Um, so, uh, Another cool example is uh, uh, HTTP servers. Um, so t typically, you'll have like an HTTP app that uh, you have like HTTP create server with like a, like a handler to receive each um, like each uh, request that comes in. Um, but instead, you can use HTTP iterator and just do create server without giving a callback and. Uh, you, you can actually do that normally and like attach a like on response event instead because that's actually what it's just doing inter internally. Uh, but this module will actually do that internally and convert that into an async iterator. Um, so you can just for await over requests. And there's some kind of neat things you can do with this sort of pattern, like pu pushing all of this into a queue and then like awaiting if you have like too many concurrent connections or something. Like you you might want to throttle. Or things like that, so you can like push stuff into a queue and handle it elsewhere, instead of like handling it all in, in this callback. It just gives you a little bit of extra controls. Um, and so this is the entirety of HTTP Iterator. Um, it's a module called Channel Surfer, uh, which provides like, Go-like channels. So you create a channel and listens to, as I said, the server on request event, and just passes the request and response into the channel and then closes the channel when the server closes and that's it. Um, so uh, we'll get into more complex uh, example now. Um, so a, a lot of like APIs will have like a, like pa paginated API and they, they might like have their pages like nested in things and it can be kind of awkward if you're like trying to deal with something like that. Um, it, if you want to like interact with like every record in a system or 
something like that, then you have to like build a whole bunch of logic on top of logic on top of other logic that just makes it complicated to interact with when you have something like that. Um, so let, let, let's just consider like we have load page, just pretend this is like fetching from the network or something. Um, it, it gets a page by the page number. Um, so we can convert that that uh, page number getting function into an async iterator pretty easily by just ha having this. Um, and uh, as long as load page returns a like truthy value, then it will keep going in the while loop and yielding pages. Um, so whenever it hits an empty page, then it stops. Um, so, but each of each of these pages looks like this. It's it doesn't give us the items; it gives us the page. What we want is actually like a list of the items. Um, so we can just convert one iterator into another iterator by just wrapping the pages iterator in one that loops over each page that it receives from that and emits each item from each of those pages. And so we can like, re reduce this like what would normally be a fairly complicated system of interacting with this like whole paginated API and just turning that into an iterator that we can just loop over every item and like stop when we want to stop or just loop over everything as if it's just like a single iterable thing, um, which is pretty nice. Um, <coughs> and then uh, another interesting application is uh, batching. Um, so you, 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 you might have a uh, like giant sequence of things you want to break up into like groups of like process 10 items at a time or something like that. Uh, so here we, we have an in infinite sequence of numbers. This will just keep looping forever. Every like 10 milliseconds, it'll give you the next number. Um, so uh, we, for batching, we want to be able to take a, like a certain number of items out of the iterator and process each of those like in that batch. Um, so uh, the, there's uh, some, some in, in interesting stuff in here that uh, we're using the like iterator dot next function instead of like a for await loop here and then like breaking at, uh, at after like n iterations. And the the reason for that is that uh, for like for await of will fully consume an iterator even if you try to break out of it. Um, so it, if you try to like hand the same iterator into like take n items out of it and then like I'll wait for that and then take another n items out of that, if you consume the whole iterator, then it's gone. Um, so yeah, that's why it's doing the while loop and the await iterator next. And when, when you're interacting with the like underlying iterator interface, you have to check the like done flag and yield the value, not like yield the uh, ob the object. Um, and so th this um, might look a little bit familiar because this is actually effectively the same thing as the stream concat that I showed you earlier. It just doesn't do a buffer concat. So this is interesting in that like you can actually like abstract away the whole like stream concat thing entirely like don't even have a module that does that just have a module that turns it in, into an array and then hand that into the buffer concat function and it works the same so you can make this more generic thing and it's just easier um, so that, that now that we have those pieces in place we can make the batch function um, so it just takes an iterator and it takes a page size and it will um, t take a, a page of that size out of that iterator, convert that to an array, and then as long as there's items to be yielded, then it'll just yield that page. Um, so we, we can do something like if, if we have infinite number of, uh, like an infinite sequence of numbers, we can like take batches of that and sum the batches or 
like th things like that. Um, but th there are some interesting pitfalls to consider with async iterators, though. Um, so I've, I've already mentioned this one, which is like uh, for a wait of loop fully consumes an iterator. Um, there's some other interesting ones as well. Um, a really weird one to wrap your brain around um, is that micro tasks are higher priority than everything else in the like event loop. Um, <clears throat> So what, what this means in practice is that you can you can do some things like in here we have we have this function that um, we, we want it to just infinitely loop over and like await some task. And we have this timeout here that just sets a flag to tell it. You know, like when when it reaches this timeout, uh, just like set, set the flag to stop running the loop. So do you think this works? No, it, it does not because there's a weird thing in async await that you can actually await a non-promise and it just will like await, like it'll yield the value. Um, so like you can just do like await one and it'll give you one and it won't actually defer. Well, it it will defer to the micro task queue, but it will be immediately resolved. And that is a that particular property is a problem um, in that the micro task queue. Um, well, basically the queue, the queues in Node like will step down to the next um, the, the next tier when the current tier has has drained. So if the micro task queue every every time it has a tick adds another task to the micro task queue, it'll just keep cycling through the micro task queue forever and we'll never actually reach anything else. So the set timeout will actually never get reached um, because it's a lower priority uh, queue. Um, so it's a little bit of a weird issue, but just re realize that Microtasks are higher priority, and you might have to debug that. Um, and the, the, this is kind of connected to that. Um, if any of you remember the whole Zalgo issue and the Dzalgo module that came out of that, um, in like er early days of Node, there was like lo lots of people would like write a async stuff that like was sometimes async like you, you might have a function that like might do like an fs read file or something but it might cache that data and then like the next time you call the function it has that stored in memory so it's just going to like call the callback immediately but it call like it is sometimes call it in the same tick instead of the next tick so like you'd have like l like logically your code would like call this async thing and then you might have something below it that 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 would like on the first run that would happen first and then the callback would happen, but then that would switch around because it was calling the callback in the same tick and it just like makes your code super confusing and non-deterministic. Non so the Dzalgo module was created to ensure that things are always async. Um, and this is basically the equivalent in uh, async iterators. We have to do this again, apparently. Um, so you just await another promise that differs to set immediate, which is at the bottom of the uh, the like tiers of queue priorities. So th this will say like once everything else is done, then jump back to this again. Um, so. Uh, I'll I, I also have a bit of performance demo. Um, so, I, I, I th there's been like I, a lot of people have uh, kind of avoided uh, async iterators and like related to that promises because of like, the myth that promises are slow, which at one point had some truth to it. But there's been a huge amount of effort that's gone into optimizing promises over the last several years that um, they're actually 
quite performant at this point. Um, so I'm gonna show a little, show a little demo. Um, so I'll just show you the code for it. Um, oops. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So on the left side we have uh, how to implement the like just upper casing stream. And on the right side, we have the equivalent code in async iterator. Um, so th th this just will take an infinite stream of stuff and uppercase it. Um, so let's see. Oops. Uh, let's see if this thing wants to work. My node module's missing. Well, that's not good. Uh, I'll just install that in the background and install for a minute. Or try to. I think it's all cached locally, so it should work without a connection. Um, Walk through the code. Um, yeah, so the the stream version just uh, you you push the like uppercase in and then do the set immediate because you need to be a re responsible async participant. Um, and this is doing effectively the same thing because of Dizalgo reasons. Um, doesn't seem to want to run right now. Um, but I'll, I'll show off um, some of the code then instead. Uh, so this is just the CSV to JSON. Um, this is like op optimized slightly from the other one. Um, so it does the line splitting and CSV parsing all in one. Um, And uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it has some helpers to handle the converting the keys and stuff. Uh, but uh, the the I, I was kind of hoping to show the demo, but it doesn't want to run. Um, so that um, I, I did some performance testing basically, and uh, the like when 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 running. The uppercase, like the uppercasing demo, um, it's fairly naive um, code, so it's not going to have any significant performance difference. Uh, but the CSV to JSON has like a little more meat to it. There's a little more stuff there that's um, it's like more real world kind of demo, and uh, the 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 code from the async iterator actually is about 15% faster than streams are and about 40% less memory usage. Um, so you can actually use async iterators now and get like as good or better performance than streams if you know how to use them properly. Um, so uh, that's basically the, the end of that. So. Go forth and async iterate. Sorry, sorry, my demo didn't work great. Right.